Hey guys, welcome back. I'd like to wish everyone a happy Merry Christmas. Okay, guys, you're now starting to see some things that I've been telling you since October coming forth. Okay, this entire video is my opinion and should not be used for financial advice. Okay, guys, I'm just, I raised some key patterns and things to you going clear back to October, guys, and I didn't do, do it by coincidence because I saw things that nobody else saw. You guys know I see patterns far beyond and at a much more in-depth level than than anybody else out there, okay? I've proven that to you significantly through time. Okay, so let's talk about some key things that I've told you guys. I've told you Iraq's walking in Kuwait's footsteps, okay? Because you guys all know Kuwait changed their currency on March 24th of 91, and guys, I've also told you that because they're going to implement the reforms in March, which is, I'm sorry, in, in Iraq told us they would implement the reforms in January. Okay, that's Iraq's Q4 period because Iraq's fiscal year starts April 1st. Here's what I've told you. I've told you that because they're implementing their reforms in, like they said, in Q4, the rate change cannot go past the end of March. It cannot go into April. Okay, flat out. They're now revealing these things to you. Let's let's look at some of the uh, things. First off, guys, this first article I don't really care about, so we're just going to cover the title because it's not pertinent to the in-depth studies that I want to go over with you guys. It's just saying that the Parliament has not received the budget yet, guys, and I very clearly told you the budget was going to go into January and wouldn't be started until January, okay? So there you go. We don't care about this article. Right here, we're gonna we have much more much more critical stuff to look at here. Okay, guys, this is from the IMF. IMF announces support for the Iraqi government's measures for economic reform today, Friday. The International Monetary Fund welcomed the efforts of the Iraqi authorities to undertake fiscal and monetary policy reforms. You know what they're telling you guys? That what they did last Sunday, when they devalued their currency on Sunday, December twentieth. They started the reforms, guys. I hope you see that very clearly. And that, that guys, they told you that they made that move to devalue their currency. They told you that was a step they were just going to do because the value of the dollar got too high against the dinar. Okay? No, 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 no. Guys, right here, they're telling you it's a step of the reforms. Okay, they're telling you this is the start of the reforms right here on Sunday, December 20th in this in this green highlighted statement. The International Monetary Fund welcomed the efforts of the Iraqi authorities to undertake fiscal and monetary policy reforms. They're welcoming the efforts. There you go. So Iraq has officially started the reforms, guys. I hope you see that very clearly. In a statement, the fund stressed that these reforms are of great importance to ensure the stability of the Iraqi economy, the repercussions of the COVID-19 pandemic, and the sharp decline in oil revenues create grave risks that threaten the economic stability of Iraq. The head of the head of the funds mission on Iraq said, "The continuation of reforms into the next stage, guys. I want to talk to you something about that." Right here, they're talking about the continuation of reforms. You can't continue something that hasn't started. Hope you understand that clearly. Okay? They've And guys, the next stage, again, I've told you guys this the entire time. The phrase, the next stage, means after the period after the rate has changed. Okay? The continuation of reforms in the next stage. Again, you can't continue something that hasn't started. So with that statement, the continuation of reforms, they're telling you they've started. Okay? They're t then here they're saying the continuation of reforms in the next stage, which means after the rate has changed, including structural areas, will have great impact on strengthening gains in short term. The International Monetary Fund is ready to support the reform efforts being made by Iraqi authorities at this challenging juncture. Let's keep moving. The statement of the International Monetary Fund's mission in Iraq also welcomed the approval of the Council of Ministers 
on the draft general budget for the fiscal year of 21, including the need for decisive recalibration on economic policies in order to maintain the stability of the economy. The statement pointed out that implement, implementing important financial reforms and reducing currency exchange rates are very important steps. Okay, so guys, they're telling you when you look at their words that the reforms have already started. Now, I want to stress something to you guys. So I've been telling you clear since October that Iraq is walking in Kuwait's footsteps. Iraq told you earlier this year at um, Around the timing at which they were kind of working and trying to approve the borrowing law, they told you they were going to start the reforms in January, guys. They didn't. They just told you they started the reforms on December, Sunday, December 20th. I told you that once they started those reforms, guys, they had to change the rate during by the end of that same quarter. They didn't start the reforms in January like they said. They started them in a period of time which, which are significant time periods that I've kind of always brought to you guys. Like any time I guesstimated a rate change, guys, I would guesstimate the rate, rate would change somewhere around kind of the 17th to the 24th period of any month uh, that when I projected. Okay, and I've always told you it had to happen on a Sunday. They guesstimated, guys, or they started that. They started their financial reforms, guys. I'm trying to make this help you understand this as clearly as you can. Kuwait changed their rate on March 24th of 91. Guys, that exact same period, okay, this year would be Sunday, March 21st of 21 okay that same period is march 21st of 91 this year it's not coincidence I, I cannot stress this to you enough it is not coincidence that iraq started their reforms on sunday march 20th i'm, I'm sorry sunday december 20th guys okay sunday december 20th guys is exactly 90 days before the same historical period as to when Kuwait did theirs. And that same date this year, guys, would be March 21st of 21. Guys, and I, again, I cannot stress this to you enough. Iraq started their reforms, guys, exactly 90 days before the historical time frame of when Kuwait did theirs, guys. And I've been telling you clear since October, Iraq is walking in Kuwait's footsteps. And I'm trying to tell you, this cannot go pat. This cannot go into April. The rate change cannot go into April, guys. I hope you heard all of that clearly. Everything that I've been telling you is is coming forward right before your eyes, and it's not the the exact timing at which they do stuff, guys. Is not coincidence. It's all planned. I've tried to recently tell you, okay. They have now officially set the 90-day stage. For the rate change that's what i've tried to tell you next article reforms and currency devaluation are key to ensuring iraq's economic stability imf says the country needs deeper structural reforms to strengthen economic resilience and lay the ground for more inclusive growth Street vendors waiting for customers in, in the market in Baghdad. The country devalued its currency about 23% against the dollar on December 20th, the first time the peg was adjusted since 2015. Financial reforms in Iraq are combined with recent devaluation of the exchange rate, critically important steps to help reduce large external fiscal imbalances to ensure the country's economic stability, according to the new report by the International Monetary Fund. The COVID-19 pandemic and the sharp decline in oil prices and output have aggravated Iraq's economic vulnerabilities. IMF mission chief in Iraq said severe, uh, severe fiscal financing constraints and challenges with meeting and external domestic payment obligations, including wages and pensions, necessitated a decisive recalibration of economic policies to maintain economic stability. The, wa the Washington-based lender welcomed Iraq to the government's plans to significantly increase 
targeted cash transfers to the poor as well as to enhance health-related spending to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 crisis on the most vulnerable. The COVID-19 pandemic and the sharp decline in oil prices and output have aggravated Iraq's economic vulnerabilities, IMF Mission Chief of Iraq said. Faced with twin shocks of dwindling oil revenue, the coronavirus-induced economic slowdown, Iraq devalued its currency by about 23% against the U.S. dollar on December 20th. For the first time, the peg was adjusted since 2015. The Central Bank of Iraq set the exchange rate at 1,450 dinar per dollar from a peg of 1,182 dinar for sales to finance the ministry. The dinar will be sold to the public at 1,470 to other banks at 1,460. The structural distortions in the Iraqi economy are the ones that impoverished the public finances and restricted the ability of reform sought by the government and the Ministry of Financing. The central bank said fiscal policy lagged behind in performing its roles and monetary policy was preoccupied with repairing the outputs of confused fiscal policy welcoming the draft 21 budget. The IMF said continued reforms. Again, right there, continued reforms, okay? That means they're telling you you, you can only continue something that, that had to have already started. Including the structural areas will be instrumental in cementing short-term gains and laying the ground for higher job rich and more inclusive growth. While providing relief from immediate financial tensions, the authority's short-term plan. Okay? The right here, guys, they're telling you that what they've done, these 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 the devaluation of the dinar is just a short term term of plan okay so what they've done right here guys is again these what they've done the devaluation of, of Iraq's currency guys that's why I highlighted this for you is a short-term plan that's going to be followed up with further reforms including deeper structural reforms to strengthen the economic resilience create further fiscal space for critical reconstruction and social spending and lay the ground for higher job rich and more inclusive medium term growth. Okay. But again, guys, I want you to think about something carefully right now. The IMF is heavily interjecting their comments right now into a lot of this, into a lot of this news about the devaluation of rights currency guys. That's because what you just saw happen was put in place by the IMF and the world bank. Okay, this isn't this wasn't Iraq didn't plan this. This was put in place by the IMF and the World Bank for Iraq to devalue their currency, guys, pretty much exactly about 90 days before they're ready to change the rate, guys. Okay, Iraq has now officially told you guys that they've implemented the reforms, okay, as of December 20th, okay exactly 90 days before Kuwait historically changed their rate on a Sunday. And they're telling you right here that this currency devaluation is a short-term plan. That's because they cannot go international with the way that their currency is structured right now. Plus, it is not internationally recognized, okay? Last month, the World Bank, there you go. I just told you the IMF and the World Bank, okay? That's why you're seeing a lot of articles right now coming out where both the IMF and World Bank are having their comments and thoughts included in these articles because they're the ones that help draft this plan for the country of Iraq. Remember, this, this whole currency devaluation was put in place to, to squeeze more three zeroed notes out of circulation, out of the citizens. It was put in place to hinder and cripple Iran. Okay. And it also reduces the spread of the dinar. Okay, that has a huge financial impact from many angles. So last month, the World Bank said millions of Iraqis could be forced into poverty due to the twin shocks of the pandemic and collapse of oil prices. Even in its benign scenario, about 5.5 million Iraqis could be pushed into poverty, the Washington-based lender said. OPEC, second largest producer, depends on oil revenue to meet 90% of Iraq's government expenditure, including 
Five billion spent on salaries for public servants each month. A white paper on economic reform must be submitted to uh, Parliament by Gustavo Madimi's government proposing slashing the bill of the government salaries to 12.5% of gross domestic product within three years from the current 25%. The paper also calls for a reduction of, of in benefits and allowances as well as reforms to the pension system. Recommendations include phasing out subsidies, critical sectors, in Iraq's economy, notably power. Iraq's eco economy was forecast to shrink by 12.1% this year before the devaluation, the third steepest contraction in the Arab world after Lebanon and Libya, according to the IMF. Fitch ratings said last month that 20% 20, 20 devaluation would increase next year's budgeted oil revenue in dinar terms by about 6% of gross domestic product. A weaker dinar also means inflation in the country will rise as the cost of imports increases. Guys, I want to stress something to you right here. They said a weaker dinar means inflation. Remember how I just showed you a little higher up? How they said a short term? This also right here proves to you that the currency devaluation is short term and most likely cannot continue into the 21 operating budget because right here they're telling you the weaker dinar will spike their inflation they can't have that their inflation has been very low guys it's been below half a percent last i checked it was with about 0.8 percent okay so they're telling you right here this will spike their inflation so again this currency de devaluation can only be short term most likely for not more than about just just this last quarter it they will probably have to end this currency devaluation game they're playing. Again, this is just this is just a all this is this currency devaluation, guys, is nothing more than a preparation step for the rate change. Okay. But again, it most likely they most likely need to they probably can't do this longer than about 90 days. Okay. In the country, will, will, their inflation will rise as the cost of imports increases. Iraq's central bank said the depreciation would not be repeated as it could use foreign reserves to defend and, and stabilize the currency. The exchange rate had become a major obstacle to the growth and development of the economy, the central bank said, prompting it to respond to the requirements of financing the budget at a rate that provides sufficient cover to the government's needs. So there you guys go. Everything you're seeing, guys, is, is, is them literally just setting the stage for the rate change, preparing for the rate change, um, in a way, stabilizing their economy for the rate change. That's what all this is. That's what all this is, guys. And as you see, the reason that the IMF and World Bank are, are jumping into the news right now is because they're the ones that planned and coordinated this, this, okay, simply for the rate change, guys. That's why I've been telling you, clear since October, Iraq is walking in Kuwait's footsteps, okay? Guys, they started the reforms 90 days, exactly 90 days before Kuwait historically changed their rate. That is not coincidence at all. That's why I stress this to you. And now they're they're doing what I've brought to your attention, guys. Okay? Again, this is not coincidence. Hey, you guys are the best. God bless every single one of you. Again, Merry Christmas, guys, and enjoy your holiday period. Take care.